This is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some adjustments to the feed dog on a Singer Model 353-354 Genie and Starlet sewing machine. The ones I'm going to show you are the most common problems that I encounter when I'm doing restoration on these vintage Singers. And uh, not surprisingly, they're also the most common that I get contacted about uh, from viewers. So um, I'll, I'll just uh, show them here and uh, maybe this can can help you if you're having a similar problem. The, the first one I want to show you is just the feed dog alignment. This is uh, how that feed dog lines up to the needle plate. Okay. Uh, you might have a feed dog, um, crooked is the most common one that I find, but it might be scraping on the side or hitting in the back, something like that. So uh, the setting of the machine for this little test here is very simple. You want to put your stitch length lever um, you know, all the way down in the longest stitch, which is the number six, which is a four millimeter stitch, and then turn the hand wheel over towards you until the feed dog rises up to its highest point that it's going to get before it goes back down. So I'll just slowly turn this over. It's going to the front, starting to come up. And if I go too far, it goes back down. So if I bring it up, get it up to the highest point, right about there. Now, this feed dog should be just about centered or centered in the slot now. Okay? And you should not have heard it scrape anywhere on the uh, on the side of the slot opening including the centerpiece okay and it you, you can do it you can look very close here at the gap the little narrow gap between the dog and the opening of the plate and see if it's equal at both ends so uh, I'll give you an example uh, one that I did last month this back corner here and this so if you're looking at the machine from the front this way the right rear corner and the left front corner were, were kind of scraping the plate now it wasn't banging it or anything but you could hear it zip, 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 like that so um, and this, this particular uh, feed dog is good, but I'll show you what to do if it's not. Here's the first thing that you want to do, and this usually will fix it, is just uh, take off your uh, needle plate, and we're going to loosen the... Oops, let me lift up the... Let me lift up that presser bar lefter. So I've got, I've got my needle out of here, and, uh, and the presser foot and stuff, so I can see what I'm doing, and I'll lift up that... Uh, uh, presser bar. I'll raise that up and um, usually what I find is somebody has removed and replaced the feed dog. So they took it out for, for cleaning or um, replacement or whatever and they've got it back in a little crooked. So what you want to do is go in and uh, if I said remove the feed dog a, a minute ago, I was wrong. You want to go in here and loosen. Come on, you loosen the feed dog screw. There we go. So, if you can see how it's it's loosened here now, right? And and usually the mistake people make is they tighten one screw all the way down, and then they tighten the second screw. And uh, that's usually what, what gets it out of whack. There, there is a little bit of play while you tighten it, and then it firms up. But it can be, it can be off center. 
by tightening one and then the other. So what I have found is uh, I'll loosen them to get them loose, make sure I have I can wiggle them, and then just come in and just barely tighten them up. I don't want them th quite this loose. I want them a little firmer than this, but not all the way tight so that I can manipulate them. Okay? I want to be able to manipulate them around a little bit. You see how that is. That's still a little, uh, still a little bit loose. So, um, the Singer manual for this talks about uh, doing this, but they, they don't mention these little things that I've come to do. See here, let's see. That one's tight. Let me loosen it about there. And then the idea is that they tell you loosen it and line it up. And then put the needle plate back on to see if you lined it up. And if you didn't line it up, take the needle plate off, loosen the screws again, try and line it up again, and so forth. And the first couple times I ever had this years ago, that's what I did. And I thought, man, this is this is boring. I never liked taking the feed dog off because it's just a little hard to get to. So you see it's still a little bit loose here. If I push on it firmly, I can move it. That's what I want. So instead of trying to line it up just by eyeballing it, I'm going to put the needle plate back on and let that line it up. So I'm going to put the plate back on, make sure that my needle plate's nice and flat and installed properly. Uh, turn the hand wheel if I have to to make sure that the feed dog is up high. And then I'm just going to wiggle it in here. Okay, and let the plate line it up. Make sure that I'm looking good in the in the plate. Now I, I can take a uh, gauge here, just pull out one of the blades, and just kind of run it along there to make sure that I've got the feed dog nice and straight. Run it on a couple of these. Now it looks good. So I found that to be more dependable than me looking at it when the needle plate is off and saying, yeah, that looks pretty good, putting the needle plate on and finding out it wasn't. So. Remembering that this feed dog now is not tightened all the way, I want to carefully remove the needle plate without touching or bumping that feed dog. Okay. And then go in and evenly tighten these screws up. So I'll turn this till I just barely feel it getting a little snugger. Then I'll turn the other one. It can get in here. Sorry, I'm working around the lights and the camera. And <laughs> Tighten that up a little more. Tighten this one, the final tightness. And tighten the other one final tightness mm -hmm. and, and you want these tight because they, they work hard all right now I'm going to double check and just put put this back on and in a, in a quiet work area you know turn my hand wheel to be sure that I don't hear it that little metal on metal scraping and it looks good and I don't hear anything so that's just kind of called the feed dog alignment um, it seems real simple but you would be surprised uh, how many times I find this a little crooked and scraping uh, and even to the point that the needle plate doesn't <laughs> sit level, you know, it sits, it's, it's up on the edge someplace. <laughs>
So uh, that's one of that's the first thing you want to check if you're having a feed dog sound or or the the uh, needle plate bumping. Okay. So the the next part. Okay, then the, the next adjustment that I want to show you is how to check and fix if the feed dog is giving you what I call a full pull. Um, meaning that when, and again for this you, you set it in, uh, you, set, you set your stitch length in the longest number six stitches per inch and uh, you, what we want to see is that should be four millimeters okay so what we want to see is does that feed dog pull the medium or the fabric or whatever you're sewing does it pull it through a full four millimeters between needle strokes uh huh. So I, of course, I'm, I'm going to have to put a needle and stuff back in here now. So let me set up, and then I'll show you how to just do a simple test or how I do. Okay, I I, I put my needle on. In this case, it's a number 14 needle. Uh, don't use anything bigger than that to for this test. And I put my presser uh, foot on there. And if you actually want to sew a stitch on fabric with thread and everything, you're welcome to do that. I just use an inexpensive uh, index card, and I will put it under there and drop the, drop the foot down on it. All right. And then I'm just going to turn the hand wheel, and I'm going to punch like four or five holes in there, okay? I don't, I'm not using any thread. You can use thread on this test if you want, even with the index card. I just want to punch the holes. And remember, you've set the mach machine for straight stitch and the longest number six. Right? Okay. So I got quite a few holes in there now. I'll lift up this so I can slip out my. I don't know if this lighting, if you can see the holes here. Yeah, I think you can see them. Okay. So then I'm just going to measure it. I'm just going to, uh, you know, take something with a millimeter. You can use inches to measure this. And uh, I'll, I'll give you the inch measurement, but it's much more accurate to do the millimeter. It should be about four, maybe four something millimeter. So I'll get like, what is that, the number upside down 15 there. And I'll try and line that up with a hole. And then I'll count one, like six, uh, 15, 15, one, two, three, four, just a pinch over four more hash marks. So this seems to be set pretty pretty good, and the feed dog is pulling a full pull. It's pulling uh, four um, millimeters in between needle strokes. So if you if you don't have a, a, a millimeter a measurement, if all you have is an inch, uh, four millimeters is about five thirty second of an inch. So if you have to use uh, inch measurements, you want about two and a half sixteenths. My, my ruler only measures in sixteenths. So if I put that, that first hole on the seven, uh, line it up good, then I get one hash mark, two, almost three. So about uh, five thirty seconds. Okay. And you know when Singer says uh, six, sti six stitches per inch, uh, we can measure that too. 
uh, it's going to be close. It's not going to be quite. It's going to be about 0.95, I think. So if I line up my first hole on the 7, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It doesn't, the, the sixth hole or sixth stitch is past the inch mark. So it's, you know, it's 5 30 seconds times 6 would be 30 30 seconds of an inch. If you like decimals, um, uh, 4 millimeters is um, a, a 0.1575 of an inch and 0.1575 times 6 you know is 95.95 something but if you're not getting the 5 millimeters or uh, sorry 4 4 millimeter or 5 30 second on your longest stitch setting then there there is a way to fix that and uh, for people who so um, you know heavier fabrics and they want that longest stitch that the machine will do uh, we, we, we can adjust that that is an adjustable setting so um, let's see how can I, I think you can see if you can see the slot on this side here uh, the other thing you can see is turning the hand wheel towards the front of the machine. Okay, it's going to go down and it's going to come up towards the front and pop up out of the slot. And then it's going to start heading back and up in the front, get to its tallest height in the middle, and start going down and to the back. Okay. So if you get it to the farthest, get your feed dog to uh, to the farthest spot forward. It doesn't. You don't want it to hit. You do not want it to hit the needle plate in the front here as it comes up. And I've had that, and it's very noisy. You hear tick, 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 tick. If it's really bad, it'll actually, you know like lift the plate a little bit, pop, 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 pop. So you want it, uh, you don't want it to hit there, but man, you want it to be pretty close. And uh, if it's not close, that usually means your stitch is going to be too short or shorter than it should be. If you're happy with the way your machine's stitching, great. But if you do this little hole test and measure it and you say, hey, I'm only getting like three and a half or three millimeters to to uh, stitch length. Um, then take a look at this and see how close to that plate it's coming up. And I'm trying to. I'm, I don't. I I guess maybe let me try and see if I can actually give you a measurement because this this uh, machine is set pretty good. So I would say, let's see, I'll line up 20 with the tip, back, t the tip of the feed dog. I would say it's about a millimeter, or a tiny bit less than a millimeter. So let's, let's call that the, a, good, a good setting, that when you're turning the hand wheel towards you and that feed dog comes up, near the front of the slot it should be close within say a millimeter a millimeter or less okay uh, now let me let me change the position here and everything and I'll show you how to adjust if if your feed dog is not coming up close to the front or if your number six stitch length is not four millimeters long and you want it to be I'll show you how you can adjust it. Okay, this is the first position I'm going to film because right here is where you make this adjustment. Okay, what I've got is a hinge screw. This is the uh, 
connection from the top. I have a hinge screw here with just a, a straight slot in it. And on this side I've got a nut. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is loosen the nut so I can turn the hinge screw. Okay, and I like to get the screwdriver in there, or how it, wherever it is, and and I like to mm, try and hold the screw steady and not let it turn as I start loosening the nut. This is a 10 millimeter uh, wrench. So there we go. Let me just just a, a, a light turning to loosen it up. Uh, let's see. Can we? Is that? Let's see if I get any more light. If it makes any difference. So as you turn this, the feed dog is going to move closer or farther to the front of the machine. But but listen up here. Um, because Singer says, don't turn it more than a quarter of a turn either way. I said, oh, I wonder what that is. So I took this out before, <laughs> and, you know, I turned it and everything, and I see it, it's an eccentric screw, and that's how it adjusts the angle and the throw of this um, shaft here. To, to see how far the feed dog moves. So that's why they don't want you to turn it more than a quarter of an inch. So look, I'm going a quarter of a turn. I'm going to turn it about an eighth of a turn to me from where I started and then I'll put it back and then about an eighth of an inch, uh, eighth of a turn back. So there's a full quarter towards me and a full quarter back. So when they put this restriction like this, what, what that means is it's not going to be a big adjustment, right? It's going to be a quarter of a turn uh, at the most, one way or the other. So you're, you're not going to be in here, you know, two or three turns one way or two or three turns back. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a minute adjustment up here. Okay? So if I... How am I going to do this? I, I was trying to figure out a way that I could... Uh, I don't have two cameras and I don't know how to sp split a screen when I edit these. But... Um, let's see, what I've got to do is kind of turn that screw while I look here at the at the feed dog. Right? So... <clears throat> So when, when you do this on your own machine, I would suggest that you just stand the machine up and even if you, you tilt it back and get your screwdriver in that adjustment screw, set the machine down flat so you can see right down in there and turn that screw in small increments until you get the front of that feed dog within a millimeter of the front of the slot. Now if you want to get it a little closer than that to try and get a little bit longer stitch, that's fine. But if you go um, like back here over a millimeter, you're not even going to get the four millimeter stitch. You're going to get a shorter stitch. So get it up within a millimeter, or I'm going to go for just a, a, a closer than that because I want a little bit longer stitch. But when you get it uh, where you want it, then you can uh, lay the machine back on its back there and zoom back out here and then put your screwdriver in and hold that screw in that position so you can t 
tighten up the nut without the adjusting screw moving. Okay, which is what I'm going to attempt to do now. And you're going to make it good and tight. Okay. And let's let's see how I did up here. Let's see if I got it a little bit closer without hitting the, the needle plate. Wee, I got it. I got it pretty good closer. I got it nice and close. So now we're going to go to the third adjustment or checking and see if we need adjusting and how to adjust the height of that feed dog. And I, I as I said before, from the top of the tooth of the feed dog above the needle plate should be 1.0 to 1.1 millimeter or 0 0.039 to 0 0.043 inches so let me get a feeler gauge here and we'll see where we're at okay I pulled out some blades of my feeler gauge and what I'm going to use is the 0 0.021 and the 0 0.022 which is a, a 0.53 millimeter and a 0.55 so this will give me a, a test of a 0 a 4 3 and the highest singer recommended was 0 4 3 3 so I'm, so I'm way up high. I, I want a lot of, um, I want that feed dog to come up pretty good there. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe this is, uh, maybe this isn't that high, but we'll find out. So with the stitch length in number six and with the needle in straight, you want to rotate your feed dog, the hand wheel, till the feed dog comes up to the highest position, which would be about in the middle, front to back, of the slot. And I'm going to put my, my uh, feeder gauge up there. And I think I'm real, I think I'm real close. Actually, I might, my feed dog might be a little bit lower than the standard height. Yeah, it's just, see how it drops down? I, when I drag it across, it doesn't come over smooth, it kind of click down. So I think I'm a little bit below the highest. It feels good, but let me show you how to adjust this um, for height. If yours is too high or too, too low and you're having trouble pulling through thicker materials and stuff. And it's going to be real similar to the other um, adjustment situation except you're going to be let me back out here where we did the front to back front to back down here um, let me get around here up here is the height of the feed dog but let's go in and loosen this uh, locking nut on the eccentric screw and it's the same thing. It's an eccentric uh, hinge screw. I believe this is still going to be a number 10 millimeter. It is. So I'll loosen that up a little bit. It's going to be uh, harder to, you know, if you stand the machine up while you do this, it's going to be harder to get a screwdriver in here, right? So you may have to leave it on its end like this and lean over the top of the machine and look down at your feed dog while you're holding the 
the feeler gauge is against it so that then you can turn easy to turn I wonder if I could just turn it with my fingertips once the lock nut it's off it's not hard to it's not hard to turn you know get a little skinnier screwdriver because there's no resistance to it now see I can just that, turn it so I think I'll just use this long skinny one and go around it here but let me uh let me turn this so you can see. You'll be looking down from the top, I believe. You'll be looking down here and trying to do that. So let's uh, let's turn our hand wheel and get that up in the feed dog up at its highest point in about the middle of the slot. And... Uh, You know what, I'm going to stand this up just so I can explain what I'm doing. Okay. So I've, I've got my two that are uh, 0 0.043. I'm going to put it on there like that up against it. And then what, what I like to do, if you're careful, you can take another one and lean it over the edge for the height guide and you can hold the three of them like that and turn that screw until the feed dock comes up and it'll hit the bottom of your of your cover blade so you've got your two height blades here and if you turn until the feed dog hits this that'll be even with the height of the two blades so that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, except, and then I'm going to come in here and turn that. Until I feel it push up the blade. Now I pushed up the blade, lifted it, so I'm going to turn it back. Just to where I feel it hitting that top cover blade that should set the top of those teeth at um, the zero four three but then of course I've got to tighten this back up to lock that in right so if I get my 10 millimeter. Well, let's see if that worked. Let's see if I got my height good now at the 043. There's my two height setting ones. Uh huh. Oh, should take that needle off, huh? <laughs> Let's see if this will now just slide right off or if it drops down. Yeah, it's sliding right off. So it's not it's not dropping down like before. So I got my height very nice. Okay, so just to double check then, I'm going to go ahead and Make sure that I've got my um, lock nut or keeper nut on there nice and tight. that is setting the height of the feed dog if yours is too low or too high good and I, I set mine up towards the upper limit but like I said it's 1.0 to 1.1 millimeter above the needle plate 
which is 0 0.0393 to 0 0.0433 uh, inches. And I have just set mine at 0 0.043. So I'm way up there towards the upper limit. But a lot of people do uh, quilting and, uh, you know, they're sewing fleece and stuff like that. So to have, to have the feed dog to a little bit higher of the range is okay for me. Very good. Now there is um, a side to side setting for the feed dog, but it is so rare that that has to be done. And it is a much more difficult uh, setting because you have to get in into uh, this area back here and loosen two nuts uh, where the feed bar attaches to the lift and then there's a screw on each end and you can see this screw would be very hard to turn and this screw practically impossible so uh, it's all you, you you almost have to take this whole lift system out of the machine and adjust those but basically if it's too far to the left the feed dog is pushed against the left of the needle plate you would loosen this screw uh, the lock nut and turn the screw like one turn and loosen this knot and tighten the screw one turn so that you're moving it that's how you center it but I've never really had to do a left right uh, movement of the um, feed dog. E every time that the feed dog was scraping on the side or sides of the needle bar, it was just loosening the dog screws and really doing the alignment properly on the installation of the feed dog. Who let the dogs out, huh? Thanks for tuning in to this latest video of Benny, the Singer Model 353. And I hope that you will come back. And uh, don't forget, you know, on my playlist uh, page, I have 400 plus videos. And on the playlist page, they're, they're kind of grouped into playlists by model numbers. So if you have a certain model number you're uh, looking for, you can go there and, and all the videos I did of that will be grouped together. See you next time. Take care.